Right, Tim. So last week I was um, down at site, uh, down just outside Seville, uh, with you. Um, met the team, which was fantastic. Went to the, the course shed, uh, which was also really, really fascinating um, to look at. Um, and also, and we managed to go out to Bravo and actually take a look at what um, the chaps were um, doing in terms of the uh, soil samples um, out there. Here's here's the big question that um, I asked you at the time, and we 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 talked about it using words today. We're going to talk about it using uh, some imagery um, to help explain um, and answer the question of you know, why are you guys looking for lead and zinc? He said to me, "Well, actually, we're looking for copper because we believe that this lead zinc can uh, commonly occur laterally. I think in this case, as an oxide uh, cover on top of." the copper that you're looking for. So um, let's maybe start with um, diagram number one. So I'll revert to these diagrams now. So, you know, VMS deposits of volcanogenic massive sulfide deposits, these things form on a, an ancient sea floor. Um, and um, of course, they're, they're very interesting to study because you can see them active um, in, in, you know, today. So you can study, they're very well studied. So you can see an ore deposit forming uh, on the sea floor. So the figure on, on the screen there on the left is a sort of schematic, a simplified version of, of the metal zonation that you see on one of these, these uh, sea floor black smoker deposits. So an analogy of what we're looking for in the Iberian fire up belt. So in the figure on the left, it looks like a bullseye, um, which it is. You have in the, in the center is the black sort of core of the mass of the of the black smoker system where all these sort of metalliferous you know metal bearing fluids are sowing coming um, emanating out onto the sea floor so that's the higher temperature part of the 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 hot smoker and you see, you see the word there black smoker next to the black bullseye center there and then you've got po and cp that's pyrotite and chalcopyrite so chalcopyrite is a chalk is a copper mineral so that sits at the core. And then if you go outward, you see PY, that's pyrite. You often sometimes get this, what they call a pyrite gap. So copper core, pyrite, then you go out into lead and zinc. So you can see on the outer ring of the bullseye there, SP and GN. That means sphalerite and galena. So sphalerite is a zinc sulfide mineral. So that's an all mineral for zinc. And GN, galena is a lead mineral, so the lead uh, ore mineral typically. So so you can see in this simplified bullseye chart, you have copper in the middle zoning out into more lead zinc on the, on the edges where the system is, is cooler. Um, and I, I just sort of uh, put in there on the, on the right of the figure is a real example. This is just a segment of the Nevis Corvo deposit. Um, and the Nevis... Sul or the Nevis, Nevis South deposit more specifically, and you can see here uh, the black you know, is, the, is the tin rich part of the system. Then you can see a uh, sort of cross hatched area, which is I've marked there with a the green CU, that's the copper um, part, part of the system. Then outward of that, you see ZN, which is the zinc, which is actually z zinc and lead uh, in this example. So here's a, here's a real example of a plan view, a map view of of the Nevis Sul deposit showing that sort of central you know, core of what may have been the black smoke, smoke going into copper and then outward um, zinc and typically with lead as well. So there's a, there's a couple of reasons. Real, real, real live example. And I, and I noticed there's another sort of yeah. example that um, maybe worth talking through as well. Yeah, so this is a very, this is a, again a, a good example, and I can draw you to other examples. I mean, uh, uh, right next door to us, Asna Poyar and Los Frailes show a similar sort of pattern to what uh, Agus Tanitas has. So in this example, you can see a, in this cross section view a feeder zone underneath the, where it says chloride zone and chloride sericite zone, etc. And then above that, there's a sort of a tan color with the arrows, the red arrows pointing with CU. That's the copper. Part, copper part of the Aguas Tanitas mine, you know, the ore body. So, and then you have the a sort of a yellow area, which is the pyrite zone, which is barren of m metals or ore minerals. And then a, a lateral to the copper zone and above, you can see what I've marked there as lead zinc, which is the uh, or PBZN, that's lead zinc. So 
here's a another real life example um, of the from the Aguistanitas deposit, which is a hundred million ton massive sulphide, uh, which has been mined for copper, lead, and zinc. So there's there's another wood. So we're starting, we're starting to say it's a pattern again for, for you know the uninitiated like myself, and there will be lots of people who get excited about copper without necessarily understanding you know the the how the geology works, etc. So that's another another good example, and I think. I think you also say, well, here's, here's a kind of simplified way of looking at it. Yeah, this, it, it. this is a very uh, yeah, sort of rough schematic, if you like, a cross-section through what we might be looking at at Bravo. So, um, again, what you can see at the, on the top there, there's a red um, a sort of uh, slope, if you like, a red line, which is the gravity anomaly. So um, the sort of you know, gravity hill, if you like. And then you've got the lead zinc anomaly, you know, partly overlapping the, the gravity anomaly, lead zinc soil anomaly. And then in cross section, you can see the post mineral cover. And then you've got what we call an offside zone, which which has got, uh, which, you know, which is typical in these, these areas. And then you've got the massive sulfide uh, shown there. So this is what I think could be going on. You've got the, the copper rich core with the, uh, sitting above the feeder zone zoning out into a pyrite zone which is the py uh, and then into the blue lead zinc uh, zone and then that's been oxidized at some point you know uh, later on and and uh covered by post mineral cover so yeah hopefully that uh gives you a pictorial uh view of, of what i think might be going on so the gravity anomaly reflecting perhaps the thicker you know core of the massive sulfide deposit if if, if there's one there and the lead zinc not anomaly reflecting both uh, peripheral, potentially peripheral lead zinc or um, the oxide zone where lead typically um, remains. Right. So basically the, the, the lead zinc and tin are all um, important byproducts, certainly in terms of do dollar terms um, to the bottom line. But we're hunting copper or that, that's that's the kind of what, what we're looking for. And we've got examples nearby in fact i was able to you know take a look at them group in mexico and even first quantums um projects um and, and we talked about you know lots of the other players in the region um so that thank you very much for that that, that kind of clarifies it in my head and to just just remind me um again so the pro the process that you're going to be going um through with bravo is what yeah so we we uh we can continue a soil geochemistry program uh the, what I reported in the last year's release, we completed about half the plan survey. We're actually now going to expand it based on the results we've been seeing. Uh, so we're yeah, currently about halfway through the planned geochemistry survey, and we've also got a ground gravity survey underway as well. So originally, the original Bra Bravo gravity anomaly was based on some early 1980s sort of quite wide space gravity uh, it, it information that was collected by, by Exxon in the early 80s. So yeah, you know, we're doing a much tighter, you know, uh, grid uh, gravity survey of the area to better d delineate the, the gravity response, um, and then we'll follow it up with some uh, with some ground further ground geophysics, some IP, yeah, you because know, these are full of sulfide mineral you know, metal metals, and you put a charge into the ground and it can light these up, and and hopefully that will give us a better idea where to best position the jewelry, and hopefully we'll be uh, we'll be drilling this target testing this concept that uh, you can see on the on the diagram there um, before the end of the year.